Well, you know, the experts tell us there's plenty of housing, but what we know from the shelter is that there is not plenty of affordable housing. They are problems of the 80s, and in particular the last four or six years. Often people who, who don't know about the homeless don't see the problem, but once they're informed, they can, they can really tune into the problem. If we could correct the image of, of what a homeless person is and bring some, some humanity to their need, we, we could do it. And we were, I guess we were hopeful and, and perhaps naive on how, how hard it was to do that and how long it would take. But I never thought I'd be here 30 years later having this conversation. It was the era of trickle-down economics. Anti-poverty and low-income housing programs were slashed. Affordable housing in greater Cincinnati was being eliminated due to funding cuts and displacement. And the number of people experiencing homelessness increased exponentially in the 1980s. As public support grew in Cincinnati, so did the attention of the media. Rob, activists for the homeless broke into this building today, what they call a symbolic gesture, to try to bring attention to the plight of the homeless, both in this community and across the country. The Take Off the Boards campaign successfully occupied, took over, and ultimately transformed an abandoned city-owned building into an affordable housing complex that still stands today. With the need for affordable housing on the rise, the coalition fought to save the Milner Hotel. This landmark building was a valuable resource for many social service agencies for decades. The space for two-parent families was very limited. The most important part of the Milner was it was the one place where you could place two-parent families when there was an overflow in the shelters. Regrettably, public funds were used to acquire and demolish the building and the site was turned over to a private developer. The Homeless Coalition, along with all their members, played an important role to say, what are you gonna do in place of the milliner? While the battle was lost, the experience helped prepare the coalition for future challenges. Buddy Gray was one of the original founders and a primary leader of the coalition for over a decade. He was an uncompromising advocate for the homeless and the driving force behind a people's movement to protect affordable housing. I mean, these ruthless people got away with this today, but a lot of the world was watching. And we're going to monitor every single eviction on Main Street, and we're not going to let them get away with this. He just devoted himself to wanting to, to make a difference in, in poor people's lives and stand with those oppressed. But he inspired people. He had a way, a, a gift of uh, drawing in people's gifts. His tragic death shook the community and the nation, but it did not break those following Buddy's mission. Thousands marched in the streets. The first edition of Street Vibes hit the streets in 1997. The now famous street paper changed the lives of many of its distributors. Basically, I was one of the first distributors of the Street Vibe. Um, my job basically was to educate. I was homeless. From selling the Street Vibes, I went on to get an apartment. From there, I went to the University of Cincinnati and I achieved an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and a master's degree. From the anti-panhandling ordinance in 1998 to the civil unrest in 2001, Street Vibes covered the major stories not effectively covered by conventional media, including the criminalization of homelessness that continued into the new millennium. A 2002 Northern Kentucky ordinance targeted people sleeping on public property. In a shameless move, the Covington Public Works Department raised camps along the river. The coalition took action, and the lawsuit against the city was settled in favor of the people who once called the Ohio River Bank home. 
The coalition is a great help for agencies because it advocates for things that agencies believe in, except they don't have the time to do the advocacy piece like the coalition does. The coalition also makes sure that if somebody is going to be evicted from under a bridge or from an abandoned building or wherever the person might be, that their rights are not being violated. When Cincinnati made it illegal to panhandle without a license, the coalition's work once again paid off as a lawsuit was eventually settled and licensing declared unconstitutional. Cherie, the bulldozer came through here late last night. After the same city council ordered sweeps of bridges and overpasses to remove sleeping people, a major federal lawsuit settlement eliminated the city's power to remove people without notice. We see this as a civil rights issue, that people have the right to be where they choose to be. In 2007, the coalition lost award-winning photographer Jimmy Heath. His legacy survives through his library of photographs donated to the coalition. Also in 2007, education efforts expanded. Education is a core mission of the coalition. We believe if people understand the root causes of homelessness and understand why we are in a, an affordable housing crisis, that they'll be more likely to help towards solutions to that problem. Until 2010, Metropole was a 230-unit apartment building that had offered federally subsidized housing for 30 years. I was just homeless about three years ago, and um, I got a chance to move up into the Metro building, which was a plus because uh, my job was located downtown, and um, <clears throat> all the places that I needed to go, provided I didn't have transportation, was located downtown. When the coalition learned of the plan to evict residents to turn the historic building into an upscale hotel, the coalition fought back. The tenants lost their homes, but after a two and a half year battle, the suit was settled in their favor and marked the first time in Cincinnati history that displaced low income tenants were awarded a monetary settlement. A few years later, the coalition embarked on one of its largest challenges to date, protecting the property of one of its member agencies. The campaign worked to save the Anna Louise Inn, a safe and affordable housing program operated by Cincinnati Union Bethel. We're the oldest social service agency really um, west of the East Coast. The historic building had a 100-year-old legacy of serving low-income women in our community. The building been down there for 103 years. I went down there to the program called Off the Street Program. I went through there and uh, they gave me my first uh, apartment, you know, inside the Anne Louise Inn. And while the Taft family donated the land in 1909 for the sole purpose of housing women, the building was wanted for commercial development. The protracted legal process over the property included numerous rallies and protests against the development. A settlement was reached in 2013. Cincinnati Union Bethel lost the original building, but they permanently preserve safe and affordable housing in Greater Cincinnati. We are building a, a brand new, built to suit, energy efficient um, new home because we really see the Anne Louise Inn as a home. Um, it will provide um, affordable housing for low income women and which completely stays within the mission of what we have done historically. We will be able to provide the legacy of the Anne Louise Inn for another 100 years at least. It is a history of eradicating homelessness, over 30 years of leadership and volunteerism, 30 years of political action, and 30 years of triumphant victories and crushing defeats. It is our challenge. Together, we are the solution. The Greater Cincinnati Coalition for the Homeless, for as long as it takes.